faith causes obedience and obedience requires sacrifice. In order for this church to continue to exist, you have to make your sacrifice. See, I, I, I've, I've noticed something, Sister Cherry. You know, I, 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 uh, I look at things as indicators. See, I, I've noticed that even though the number of young adults between, we'll say, 30 and 45 has grown, their giving hasn't. And whenever I talk to them, they're doing better than the last time. So I know they're doing better. Their income is going up. But the church is still being supported by those who drew you home. The church is still being supported by those who drew you home. It's time for your sacrifice. It's time for your sacrifice. Here's my goal. The goal is that we, can, we don't fail in the assignment of God. The goal is that we do not fail in the assignment of God. You can't have success without sacrifice. And there, there are a lot of people who don't really understand that success comes with sacrifice. And if you're not willing to sacrifice, then you need, you need to stop looking for success. You, you can't have any success without sacrifice. Listen, we have to understand what it takes to be who we are. In, in order for us to be who we are, individually and as a church, great sacrifices have to be made and great sacrifices had to be made. And if we don't understand that, if we don't appreciate that, we, we do ourselves a great harm. And parents, we have to stop hiding the truth from our children. We have to help them to understand that wherever they are in life and whatever they have in life, it came as a result of great sacrifices that were made. But here's the thing, if you sacrifice the right way, you don't have to make that sacrifice again. You do have to make a sacrifice, but you don't have to make that sacrifice again. See, Jesus, in that he died for sin, died once. Come on, church. Th those who died to establish the early church died once, but now the early church is here. Th those who sacrificed to reform the church during the days of Martin Luther, they, they suffered once, but now we have the body of Christ. Listen, those who fought the civil rights movement that we might be free from slavery. See, I will never have to sacrifice to be free from slavery, but there are still sacrifices that I have to make. Nobody's asking you to go and make yesterday's sacrifice, but don't think that because somebody sacrificed yesterday that you are exempt today. The sacrifices of yesterday open up opportunity for the sacrifices of today that allow the next generation after us to make the sacrifices of tomorrow, each group moving the next further ahead. I don't want us to fail in the assignment of God. You know, uh, two Sundays ago or three Sundays ago, we had so many babies that we blessed at this altar that we had to bring them up in two rounds. There's no guarantee that this church will be here for them. There's no guarantee that there will be a school for them. There's no guarantee there will be a pastor for them. There's no guarantee that they will be able to come here and hear the word of God. There's no guarantee that those parents will have a place to bring their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. This place is not a guarantee. We exist because of our sacrifices. We remain because of our sacrifices. And the only way we go forward, we must continue to sacrifice. Somebody's got to get this. Many of us come from families that used to have noble family trees. 
where every branch was a husband and a wife. Now we have weeds. Where we have a hard time naming the nieces, nephews, or cousins that were born in matrimony. See, there's no guarantee that because granddaddy or great-granddaddy planted the family, that the family stays the way that it was. There's no guarantee that because you were the first person to go to college that your children will. The sacrifices of yesterday bring us to today, but they require the sacrifices of today. And then we have to teach those who are coming behind us the sacrifices that were made so that they have the proper mentality. We have a generation of young people who want the benefits of sacrifice, but don't understand the sacrifices that were made to acquire the benefit. And that's our fault. That's our fault. If our children are selfish, it's because we taught them selfishness. If our children are unappreciative, it's because we taught them a lack of appreciation. If our children are ungrateful, it's because we taught them a lack of gratitude. We have work to do. Whether it's individual or collective, I don't want you to fail in your assignment. So I've got some objectives. I want to teach us seven things. So y'all know it's going to take a minute. I want to teach us, first of all, what is sacrifice? Secondly, I want to teach us what is our sacrifice? What's our collective sacrifice? Because actually we're not all sacrificing different things. We're all sacrificing the same things for the same thing. Then third, I want to teach us what is the benefit of our sacrifice? Because I can hear sometimes people say, well, why? Not, why? What, is, what good is it going to do me? I'm going to teach us the benefit of sacrifice. And then fourth, I want to teach us why I must sacrifice. Why I must sacrifice. And then fifth, I want to teach us what is my sacrifice. Amen? What is my sacrifice? The Bible puts it this way, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? What's my sacrifice? Sixth, I want to teach us how to develop a sacrificial mentality. How to develop a sacrificial mentality. And then seventh, I want to teach us how to answer the call to sacrifice how to answer the call to sacrifice. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And while you're going there, I want you to subtitle for the rest of my time, and I don't have a lot of time left. I want you to subtitle the message for this morning, What is Sacrifice? What is Sacrifice? I just want to make sure we all have the same understanding of this word sacrifice. Before I give you what sacrifice is, I just want to make a, a couple of statements to just help us out. I want you to listen to this very carefully. Faith causes obedience, and obedience requires sacrifice. Faith causes obedience, and obedience requires sacrifice. Faith in God, confidence in who God is, confidence in what he said, causes obedience. If I have faith in God, I'm going to obey him. And if I'm going to obey him, obedience requires a sacrifice. There, there's no, no point and at no time when we obey God that a sacrifice is not required. And sometimes we quit on the sacrifice because we forget that that's a part of the obedience. So no faith equals no obedience. No obedience equals no sacrifice. If I don't have confidence in God, if I don't trust God, it's going to be difficult for me to sacrifice. Now, I'm going to give it to you in a way, I'm going to, let's talk about money for just a second, because that's a way that makes things easy for everybody to understand. If I don't understand and have confidence in investing, I don't have savings or retirement.
because I see I need this money now. What am I going to do if I don't have this money? Well, I'm going to give that money to somebody I don't know who they are. Come on now. Well, I'm going to put my money in that somebody's bank. I don't know what they're going to do with my money over in that bank. I mean, I need my money. So I don't have any savings and I don't have any retirement because I, I'm afraid. See, fear and faith won't, won't counter. So I just, I, as long as I'm holding on to it, I think I got something. But every month I'm empty. Well, it's the same thing with God. If I, if I don't have any confidence in him and the fact that he has my best interest at heart, why am I going to sacrifice? Why am I going to not get what I want? How that going to work out for me? It's the same concept. So in Hebrews chapter 11, we call this the hall of faith, the book of faith. People call it different things. I like to call it the hall of obedience because the faith produced obedience. Amen? And, and we want to look at Moses for just a second as an example of sacrifice. Verse number 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years or come of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Watch this. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of his reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. In other words, by faith, Moses understood that there was something greater than the comfortable life he had. He understood that there was a God that was greater than the king that he was serving. He realized there was a purpose that was more valuable than where he presently was, and he was willing to sacrifice those things in order to do the will of God. I'm going to give us seven definitions, three that you're very familiar with, four that are going to be not as familiar to you of what sacrifice is. So we don't have one point, we got seven, but we're going to get through as many of them today as we can, maybe all seven. But definition number one or point number one, whichever way you want to do it, to sacrifice means to exchange the lesser for the greater. To exchange the lesser for the greater. Moses was willing to leave his comfort and leave his position because he understood that people and purpose were greater than his comfort and his position. Come on, church. Moses saw the invisible God as more important than the visible things that he had. Too often, we don't know what the greater is, so we won't give up the greater for the lesser. Now, Sister Chair, I, I did some quick math. You know, we refused to give our children cell phones growing up. I, I did some quick math. The average cell phone family plan runs a family about $300, give or take. We're a family of five, so ours may be a little high, yours may be a little less. But the average family plan. We, we refused for 15 years to give our children cell phones. Now, $300 a month times 12 months is $3,600 per year. $3,600 per year times, let's just do 10 years, is $36,000 dollars that we could then direct to a scholarship fund that duplicated its investment twice in that same 10-year period. So I gave up the lesser and gained no college loans. 
But most of us are not strong enough to give up the lesser for the greater. We hear the whining of our children and we pander to the lesser and then strap them with decades of debt and an inability to finish in many cases. We have children in this church who neither have a degree and they're not debt free because their parents ran out of money and the ability to borrow before they could get a diploma. And they were in a church where they were taught to do differently. Just an inability to exchange the lesser for the greater. And if we don't stop this foolishness of taking on the lesser, taking on the lesser. Listen, some of us have stopped tithing because of McDonald's, Wendy's, and Chipotle. Because we can't stop eating out and we can't afford it. So we'd rather rob God and die of cancer than cut off our stomach and the few things that it wants in order to please God and have life. You can forget what the greater is. You can start thinking your belly is the greater. Technology is the greater. You can start thinking all of these other things are the greater and you can forget what the greater really is. And I'm just making a call to sacrifice. It's time to get our minds right and our focus right and we've got to start giving up the lesser things in order to get the greater things. Secondly, sacrifice means to give up short-term pleasure for a long-term gain. To give up short-term pleasure for a long-term gain. Moses was willing to give up the pleasure of sin for a season in order that a people might be redeemed. He, he was willing to give up the pleasure of sin for a season that a people might be redeemed. He, he was willing to give up everything that was pleasurable because he saw. Listen, I, I want us to see some things, amen? When, when you're selfish, you don't see. But, but when you get a sacrificial mind, you lift up your eyes and you see some things. I, I want us to look up and see some things. Thirdly, to sacrifice means to go without so that others might have. To go without so that others might have. It's not neglect, but it is denial. I'm going to go without something so that somebody else can have what they need. Church, I shared this with the men in men's fellowship. You can't have it all anyway. In order to have one thing, you always have to give up another. And then the last definition I'm going to get to today is to give up what I possess to strengthen what I have. To give up what I possess to strengthen what I have. See, sometimes we confuse what we possess with what we have. What I pos anything that is temporary or temporal, you only possess it. You don't have it. Anything that is temporary or temporal, you don't have it, you just possess it. See, money is something you possess, you don't have it, because it's temporary and it's temporal. Your house, your car, in anything that doesn't have permanence, you possess it. Eventually, it's gonna leave your possession one way or another. In other words, watch this, anything that doesn't go with you when you die, you only possess. You, you don't have it. You, you only have what can go with you when you're no longer here. And, and we only have three things. We have a relationship with God. We have the truth of his word. And we have each other. Why? Because we all hopefully are going to the same place. Now everything else we just possess. And, and what God wants us to do is be will, willing to sacrifice anything we possess to strengthen our relationship with him. 
to sacrifice anything we possess to make sure that we carry out the truth of his word and to strengthen anything that we possess to strengthen one another because we have one another. We just possess some stuff. And what good does it do me to have some stuff if you end up lost? And aren't the people that we are connected to worth more than the things that have connected to us? Aren't the people that we're connected to worth more than the things that have connected to us? Church, this is a call to sacrifice. For homework, read Habakkuk chapter number one. I mean, hey guys, excuse me, chapter number one. And when you get there, you don't have to understand it all. I'll explain it to you next week. But I want to end with this. God has been faithful. He has brought us through a global pandemic. And even though we may have gone through some adversity, our lives have remained intact. Now just listen to me. Don't clap yet. Listen to me. But his church has suffered. His church has suffered. And the question is, are you just going to rejoice in the house that he provided for you while his house keeps suffering through? Or are you ready now to repay the sacrifice that Jesus made to keep you through this time? My time is up, and I thank you for yours. Amen. If you're watching, if you're listening, we want you to know that God loves you, that he desires to do a work in your heart and in your life, but you must be willing to invite him in. Ask him to save you, ask him to change you, and ask him to turn your life around. And the way that you do that is by praying a very simple prayer that I am about to pray. Now, whether you are watching this service online, whether you're watching it live or you're watching it at a later time, whether you're on a cell phone, a laptop, TV, or streaming service, it doesn't matter. Or whether you are here in this sanctuary, if you know that God has spoken to your heart and you know that it's time to give your life to Jesus Christ, we want you to pray this prayer. If you are in this sanctuary, Maybe you were invited here. We're grateful to have you. And you have never prayed the prayer of salvation. You've never given your heart or your life to the Lord. No matter where you are in the sanctuary, I want you to just stand where you are. And as I pray this prayer, I want you to pray the prayer standing in the place where you are. If you're online and you're listening to this service, no matter where you are, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just repeat after me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Create in me a clean heart. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and was raised from the dead to give me life. I receive him now into my heart. And I commit this day to live a godly life. God, I thank you for this opportunity to change and turn my life around. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.